Welcome to another Toronto FC Touchline Talks. I am Gareth Wheeler. Another week, another TFC player is joining me on this podcast. So wheels up to one of my favorites. Uh, he's been avoiding me essentially because they won't let me up at the training ground. So I actually haven't had a conversation with him for quite some time. Uh, it's been long overdue. And this player has had an outstanding season, which has earned him a call up to the Canadian men's national team uh, uh, as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is your friend and mine, Mr. Jacob Schaffelberg. What's going on, Jacob? How are you? Not much. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing well. A little tired from last night, but I'm doing well. A 2-2 two, two draw. Uh, look, when you go down that early in a game, though, it's still a shot in the arm. And I think there are still plenty of positives to take from it. Or are you just at the point now? Just give us the three points. Come on, let's go. Uh, it, I thought it, we, were, we were the better team. Like, obviously, that when we go down that early, it's you don't even really realize it happened. But I thought we, we after we went down, we, we did really well to get back in the game. Like, I thought they didn't really know how to deal with us. For the first half, really, we were in their half, and uh, we just couldn't get a goal. But we kept going, and, and it turned out to, to get the draw, which was good. You have now featured in 10 consecutive games. Uh, most of, if not all of, all of them have been starts, Jacob. Yet your running is just on another level. You simply don't stop out there. Are you tired at this stage of the season? Like, how are you feeling right now? I'm a little sore today, but it's just, I know that's my biggest strength that I bring as a team. So. That's what I got to do to 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 help everyone out. So that's why I run so much. And I love running, so it's all good. It feels good to run and, and do my thing out there. Are, are, are you a runner runner or like a soccer runner? Because those are two different things, right? The people that you see going out in their short shorts, like I don't running like running for fun. No, I did back and field like growing up, but I, I never did anything longer than the 400. So I'm I'm more of like a short distance guy. Okay. okay. I, I, but I got a feeling that you could do the long distance. Stuff I did long too. distance, like grade, grade eight, like way okay. back. But then I kind of stopped. I was like, this is no fun for me. So I like the, like the short distance stuff. You're still young. I found that as I got older, like running in sports is a different thing than running just to run. And yeah, I don't think I could ever fun. be that guy. It's not as fun. Yeah. No matter what podcast I'm listening to or what tunes I have in my AirPods, like I, just nothing will, will, will make that work. No, um, obviously, it's been, it's been a frustrating season for the team. But for you personally, it started with a bang right out of the gate in the CONCACAF Champions League. And it's ending on a very high note as well. As, as well. How do you kind of approach this season and how it's been for you with the trials and tribulations and the successes along the way? Uh, you just got to be mentally tough in this sport, I feel like. Because like you said, I started off well. In the beginning of the year with a few starts and I was playing quite a bit. And then just like everything, you have your ups and then you have your downs. So I was down and I was I was playing like I had a game with the USL um team. So it's like you go from playing with the first team, you go up and down. So I think it's just about keeping your your head screwed on and and just seeing the end goal and, and always being ready. So uh when Suba got hurt, which is a, a saying like I feel bad for the guy, but it was like an opportunity for me to come on and and it's one of those ones where you just have to take it um whenever it's whenever it's given to you and and i just run with it so that's what i've been trying to do since then i mean i mean suba is a player who scored some big goals for this club you hate when any player goes down and uh you know he's on the road to recovery right now but uh not every player kind of approaches a situation like that but you kind of used it to give you a lift was that your mindset? Like as soon as you came on in that game on August 14th, like this is my chance to make an impression right now because you certainly did Jacob. Well, when I saw him go down, I didn't think it was anything serious, but obviously it is. And I feel bad for the guy. Like I've had hamstring problems. So I'm wishing him like this the speediest recovery, but it was, I, I get, I have pretty bad pregame nerves leading up to games until the game starts and I'm fine. But just the lead up always gets me a little bit. And I think what helped me with that game was I had no nerves because I was like, oh, like if I go on, it's going to be 70th minute, 80th minute. Like I got time. And then he went down. I was like, oh, I'm, I might go on. Like maybe they put someone else on. And then like I got called on. So I didn't have time to really process playing that early. So it's like kind of got on. It was just my mind was like clear. I was free. I was just I knew what I had to do. And it, I think that helped me quite a bit kind of get, get my feet on the ground early on. It, it, that's interesting you say that because I do think a lot of professional athletes do have nerves, but it's the 
about the way that they channel them uh, for, for when they go in and play. Uh, is there something particular that makes you kind of nervous or is it just the anticipation for what's to come? The anticipation. Like when I did track and field, I had the same nerves. It's just like the lead up and when you're on like the blocks and everything, like when the guns want to go and you're in track, it's, I had the same nerves. It's just once the whistle blows, I'm, I'm fine. I have no nerves. I'm just completely normal, but it's just the lead up always gets me. I don't know <laughs> do, why. Do you think like 10 years from now, that will be the same way? It's just something that was just going to be the I case. hope not. I hope not. I hope they'll be a bit better, but <laughs> they're getting a bit better every game. But like, you, obviously, in the beginning, you don't want to mess up, so you always have those nerves. But just like you said, like my tenth consecutive game, so they get a bit better each each game. Um, so hopefully, they're not this bad in ten years. <laughs> uh, it, it seems like you're playing with a level of confidence right now. Um, I think oftentimes when you're a young player, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you're coming through, you might overthink things to a certain degree, but now it seems like it's coming much more naturally for you. Is that yeah. an accurate assessment? No, I agree with that. Like my first year, I, I came in and played those stretch of games, and I, I didn't overthink anything because I just played my own what I know. And then for like the next year, I kind of started overthinking everything I did. And now I'm kind of getting back to doing what I know and 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 kind of just simplifying everything a bit more. And also I've been I've been trying to go to the gym way more with one of our, our trainer Steve. He's our fitness guy and he's gotten like an own workout plan for me. So I feel more like stronger. So I think that gives me more confidence um, in like everything I do on the field as well. So it's been, he's been really helpful and it's been good for me. I, I was discussing that with Jaquiel uh, last week, you know, for young players, when you're playing against established, uh, you, you know, players like people that have filled out into their bodies over time, th that has to possess a challenge as well. So the fitness part really plays a big role, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and just for my confidence, it plays a big role as well. Just knowing that I can, cause I've always grown up, I've always been kind of like the scrawnier guy that gets pushed off the ball. So just being able to kind of fend for myself a bit more is, is a big confidence booster for me. So it's been great. And uh, your distribution uh, and a little bit more cutting edge in the attacking third is noticeable as well. Uh, is it kind of like the matrix? I don't know if you're too young for, you know, Neo, Keanu Reeves, the matrix, like I, things I, slow I, I, down. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> things slow down for you. Uh, it, it seems like that's what inevitably happens when you, when you reach that comfort level or things slowing down for you in that area of the field. I think I'm just going back to, to my normal self almost. Cause it's always been like that for me, but like you said, I would always overthink it. So I'd get in the right spot and I'd say like, this is the right ball, but then I'm like, well, maybe I should cut it back for whoever's at the top of the box. And then by the time I think about that, it's, I'm making the wrong choice. So now I just have it in my head that if I get in the right spot, I just whip it in to an area where our striker should be like last night, if, if it wasn't an own goal, it was going to Josie. So it's like, I didn't really see him. I just kind of saw the area where it should go. So it's, it's just, it, it's just like kind of doing what I know is right more so which makes me kind of been better the last 10 games that that's interesting and and i guess that it possesses a little bit of a challenge when you're playing with a number of different players and under a number of different coaches so how have you had to adapt your game based upon the injuries in the team and obviously the, the changes in leadership from last year then the then the changes this year as well uh with the injuries I've, i feel like my role is kind of kept consistent I like Javier likes to use my speed quite a bit. So it's, I, I know my role and, and guys on the team know it as well, but it's, it's been good playing with also Richie and like Kamar, like on that side, it's, they've been super helpful for me. Um, kind of going through all the motions, like no one would be helping me be in the right spot. Cause like, I still haven't played that many games. So it's, it's, it's been helpful for me just cause I'm not quite, like where they are with the games and like nowhere to be. So it's, it's been helpful. Well, it, it's, it's so funny because it was just a short time ago. I remember speaking to your old head coach, Greg Manny. And he said to me, we need a player that can get in behind the back line. And there's this young Canadian kid from Nova Scotia, Jacob Schalferberg. He can be that. And he was so high on you. Like flash later. Now you're getting calls up, uh, called up to the Canadian men's national team. What is this process moving from, you know, TFC two up to the first team, getting your legs, um, becoming a professional and, and now starting your really in earnest, your international career. You're still just 21, Jacob. It's all happened relatively quickly, but has it felt like a quick process for you? Uh, 
Yes and no, because I feel like I've had this up where I've been on the first team, 2019, playing like stretch of games, and then I've gone down. So it's, I feel like it's like I've been there, and then I haven't been there, and then I've been there. But for me right now, I just got to kind of focus on staying up and 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 keeping my role and keeping my spot on the team as just as long as I can, and uh, just so I can be like that guy who plays game in and game out and, and helps the team. That's that's my goal, just to help the team and, and keep playing. You talked a, bit, a little bit about um, kind of your style of play. Is there a player out there that you mirror your game after? Or are you kind of like, yeah, I, I kind of would like to play similar to that player? Um, I, do, I like Marcus Rashford like a lot. I mean, I fan, so I like him a lot. Um, I just like how fast he is and his speed and, and how he finishes and his runs in behind. So I, I like to look at him a lot, how he plays. Um, but I haven't like found, I haven't, I like to kind of keep like, I take from every other player almost kind of like see what they can do. Like runs in behind. I like to watch those cause I feel like that's one of my strengths. So just to try to follow guys who make these runs in behind and see if I can bring them to my game and stuff. Like yeah. That. You are your own brand. You are the yeah. Schaffelberg. And that's then I just try, try to take and take little snippets from other guy, other people who play. So well, what's, what's incredible to me. And, uh, it's the amount of and the number of talented Canadian players who now play in, in wide positions. Like even for yeah. this club, you and, and, and Richie, you go to the national team, see what Buchanan's doing now. That guy named Alfonso Davies. Yeah. Like it, it's just it's just such a position of strength. What, what do you make of that? Is, is, is there something kind of um, in the development of Canadian players? Is it just kind of naturally where you players slot into the overall equation? What do you make of kind of the depth of that position in this country right now? I'm not sure. Honestly, it's like, it's obviously, it's, it's amazing to see all the, all the players that play in the wide roles. Um, that's a good question. Like, I guess it's just one of those things. Like we come through the age group, there's either all these strikers, midfielders or defenders. And I just feel like our, our kind of age right now is like a lot of wingers and attackers that are coming through that have, have been having great success, which is it's really good. Yeah. I mean, clearly, you know, you're an attack minded player. You like to get in behind the back line, but now a lot of those players are playing like a wing back position. And I know that, you know, coaches have asked you to play more defensive role, change your role at times. Are, are you comfortable doing that? Is, is, is that something that you can maybe see a little bit more, of, um, you know, just a, a natural evolution of your game, you know, being able to play that little bit more defensive role and then really use your speed and legs going both ways. Yeah. I'd love to see myself more like to try to play that role or try to learn it. Um, cause it, it, it'd be helpful for my career also is that I can not only can I be a winger, like a, oh, no winger, or I can also be a wing back or even a left back type thing. So I think that'd be something that I'd love to learn or, or trying to dive into uh, way more, which would be fun. Cause I, I do like how, when you play a wing back, you can kind of see it come over and you have more time to get up to speed and all that. So it, that's something that does help me. Um, so I'd like to look into it for sure. Well, you know, playing into space is, is, is much different when you're kind of limited and, you know, yeah. when, when, a, when a player's tied up on you and you certainly have the tools to take full advantage of that. Um, the emerging story was told on torontofc.ca, uh, your history, a Berkshire school, a Chara, you two, play, like really when the, the team started to turn things around, both of you players were at the forefront. You know, the only thing I know about the Berkshires, I watched the real housewives and they typically have like these big mansions in the Berkshires. What else can you tell us about it? <laughs> There's not a lot going on. There's like maybe 10 to 15 other prep schools like Berkshire in that area um, within like an hour and a half. And it's just, uh, it's just kind of like a, a community in its own. It's like a bubble and it's, I, I loved it. It's just, you have everyone, you have all your classmates there, you support them in their, in their games and everything. They support you in, in your games. It's, I don't know, it's a great, great, like great feeling to be a part of that school. And, and to meet Achara and now play with Achara here has been crazy. Well, I just see Jack Harrison, you, Achara. I mean, like, it's a little bit of a factory, a little bit of a gem, you know, which, there's all these different pipelines that players take in order to reach their goals and to reach the highest level. That seems like a decent one based on the players that are coming through Jacob. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw Jack Harrison, like kind of get Gatorade player of the year. And then he was going to wake Forest, So I was like, I, I want to follow exactly in his footsteps. And then he went first overall in the draft. So I was like, I want to go exactly the way this guy is going. So 
he was a, he was a great role model for me going through. Hey, with the except you said you're a United supporter, but he was City and Leeds, so that's where it ends right there, yeah, right? Yeah, so. I mean, I also <laughs> for Jack, but not the team. <laughs> if Jack yeah. play, I'm okay with it. Uh, we've documented your, your past, you know, growing up in Nova Scotia. I know there's a lot of pride out there. I mean, uh, when I was coming through, you know, not only as a broadcaster, but just watching football in this comp in this country, there was anti anti Jazzic. Like he was the guy from how from 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 Nova Scotia, really. Um, do you feel like you're kind of rewriting what football is like in that province? Because the emergence of Halifax Wanderers has been a great story. Like the the crowds and support is fantastic there there's a real atmosphere so what do you make of soccer on the east coast of this country and how it you know the bar is continuing to be raised um I, yeah the wonders have been great for for nova scotia and and like on a personal level i think it's it's been cool to see because i have all these relatives family friends and and people who you'd never think would be watching soccer or support or like texting my mom about like watching the full game last night or like getting into it saying, Oh, this should happen. Who's this? So it's, it's, it's amazing to see how I kind of bring that upon them to watch a game because they feel like they are part of my success coming up, which is, it's true. Like I, I, I'm from a small town, like 1500 people. So pretty much everyone was had something to do with the success of, of me coming through there. So it's it's a good feeling kind of bringing more more light to, to soccer where i'm like in my small town so it's port williams correct port yeah, williams port where, williams. where you're from i have don't hate me for this jacob but i have never been to nova scotia it's awesome. like on my to-do list what is the best part about nova scotia um so t- like where i'm from it's just everyone knows each other like you know each other from your car you drive like you when you in your town, you, you can't go to the grocery store without meeting like one of your neighbors or someone you know. So it's I like how small the community is and, and how how nice everyone is. They're, everyone's very caring and, and loving for everyone in the community. So that's that's what I'm a big fan of, a good community. And that's what like, really Nova Scotia is. And and to be even more exact, like what Port Williams is about. So that's what I love about Nova Scotia. I, I know COVID has messed up a lot of things. Have you been able to make it back out there to visit friends and family? Well, I had a, I had a plane ticket booked for after Chicago. Um, but then three days before that, I got a call from John Herman to come to the national team. So it was, it was, it was like going home and the national team. So it, it kind of waited a bit. <laughs> So how did that conversation go? Sorry, mom, but uh, yeah, I texted I texted my mom and dad in the group chat. I said, I'm not coming home uh, Saturday. Like, what? I was like going to the national team. They're like, oh, I'm pretty sad, but that's amazing. Like they were, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were they were sad, but also really happy at the same time. So so at the end of the season, is is that first on the to do list? Get home. Yeah, I'll go home family? for the minute I can to to whenever I have to come back. But my mom and dad and girlfriend just came up for the last two games, which was really nice. Awesome. Uh, let's let's talk about that Canada experience. Actually, before I get to the Canada experience, have you met Ante Jazik? Have you? Have you, have you, have you I know. Uh, maybe I met his brother. I think. Yeah. From back home, but I think I, I may have met him once, but like when I was a long time ago. I haven't met him within the last like five years. So. Yeah. yeah. Stephen Stephen Hart. I'm going with everyone I know in the soccer. Yeah, Stephen Hart. He's a, he's a good family friend of all, like ours, like my mom and dad too. Very cool. And yeah. there's some good young players coming through the Halifax Wanderers ranks as well. Do, do you know a lot of these players like Scott Firth, Kieran Basket, some of the, the young players coming through? Yeah, Kieran was a good guy, a good buddy of mine on the Canada Games team. And I, I, I'm happy that he's doing well. And he had that big PK save the other day. And yeah. uh, I'm happy that he's, he's doing well there. Good stuff. Yeah, it's 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 very cool to see that community emerge. I mean, when I was playing university soccer, St. Mary's was always like one of the best teams in the country. Uh, and they continue to do so. So there's clearly talent like yourself emerging um, on the East Coast. Uh, the Canada call up. Were you surprised when John Herdman gave you a call? What did that conversation sound like? Um, I was because when I booked my tickets home, I was like, I don't know if I'm actually going to go. Like, this feels too real to go home right now. And then I was on, I was on the way to practice Friday morning with Oso. He was driving me in and. I, my phone started ringing. I looked down. It's John Herdman, so I answered it, and uh, he's like, "I'd like you to come in. Like, hey, you've been doing really well. Like, we want you to come in and meet meet us in Mexico on on Monday." And I was like, "Sounds good. I'll be there." And now uh, it was a quick conversation because I was like, "I got. I, I'm going. So why not? I'm, I'm happy to go. I'm, I'm excited." And uh, that was about it. 
So amazing. Uh, over the years with TFC, there's been this, this message, you know, all for one, which is kind of rung true at the club and, and it's led to a lot of success over the years. There seems to be a brotherhood forming within the Canada camp as well. Uh, you went to your first camp the January before COVID hit. You're back in for this cru- these crucial World Cup qualifiers. You made your way into the field as well. What's the feel among the group within the it's, Canada camp right now? It's a really cool feeling. It's And nobody stands above anyone else. We're all on the same level. We all fight for each other. Um, we're all friends. It's, it's a great feeling on the team. I, I loved it. Um, just seeing how, ever, how invested every single person is. Um, and, and I feel like we're all like, the age isn't like too crazy. Like where there's a lot of young guys on the team too. So it kind of like balances out. And, and if, I don't know, it just feels like everyone's really even on the team and it, it's a, it's a fun team to be a part of. Very cool. Uh, that Panama game was pretty special playing it at BMO field. Wasn't it? Yeah. That was, I think that was the most fans I played in front of that BMO. Like, cause when I first came 2019, it was, there's a decent amount of fans in the summer, but that was like the first real, like that was, it was a crazy experience. Yeah. I think that was the second loudest I've ever heard it at BMO Field after yeah. the 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 MLS Cup win. Like yeah. those were the two times. Yeah, it was wow. amazing experience. For, uh, for sure. We just got a couple minutes left. Uh, do you want to go through some quick rapid fire questions? I put players on the spot on a regular basis. You might as well be next up on the chopping yeah, block here. I'm I'm, I'm easy. I'll, I'll do whatever. All right. What's your preferred nickname? Shaft. All right. Your favorite player was it Rashford? You already said that. <laughs> yeah. You're, uni- yeah. you're United supporter, so I already know that you're a smart, smart guy. Uh, do you prefer Donaire or Lobster? Lobster. I don't even know what Donaire is. I don't yeah, it's the thing they cut off the side there. I don't, even, I don't eat it, but Lobster is so much better. Uh, who's your biggest role model or a leader that you turn to in your Toronto FC team? Uh, I go with like um, also or Michael Bradley or Richie. I mean, all the guys, honestly, everyone pretty much. I can look to somehow. So if you were on the Titanic, you had one life jacket to give up. Who would you throw it to Alex Bono or Jay Chapman? Bones. <laughs> He's, still <here. laughs> He's still here. So I got to give, I got to give my loyalty. <laughs> What's your favorite moment so far, thus far playing for Toronto FC? Uh, definitely my home debut against Atlanta when my parents were there. I was that was an to... unbelievable game too, yeah. eh? Yeah, that was my no. favorite moment. Uh, th- I already asked you the best thing about Nova Scotia. Uh, the the best piece of, of of advice that you've been given thus far in your career. Oh, geez, I don't even know. That's a tough one. I we'll skip it. I'll I'll dumb yeah, it down I... a notch. Your favorite video game? <laughs> uh, Warzone. Call Warzone. Of Duty. Yeah. Right. Favorite musical artist right now? Who are you listening to? Kanye West. It, now, are you just going to start calling him Yay? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, it's getting a weird like, one. I, I heard he got it like legally changed, but I, I, I it's, I feel like I keep using Kanye West because that's what everyone else would be using. So just don't change your name to Ja or something. No, like I, that. Won't, I won't. Keep, keep your, your, your entire thing. And finally, what show are you watching or movie? What are you watching these days? Uh, you. I'm only like uh, four ups or maybe seven episodes into like this season three. Well, it's crazy. So right on. Well, the road trips are coming to an end. Some big yeah. games still upcoming. Good luck the rest of this season. The Canadian Championship, hugely important. Looking forward to next Wednesday night at BMO Field. And good luck with Canada as well. If you make your way out to Edmonton, bundle up and I'll see you out there. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jacob Schaffelberg. Top man, top season, top role model for young Canadian players coming through as well. This has been this week's uh, Touchline Talk. Join us next week. And we'll see who the guest is. Your guess is as good as mine. I am Gareth Wheeler. Wheels up. And we'll catch you next week.